Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Gutekantz, Superintendent of Needham Public Schools. Recently, the school committee adopted three goals to improve learning within our schools. Advance standards-based learning, develop the social and emotional skills of all students, and promote active citizenship. Today's program will focus on goal one, advanced standards-based learning. Joining me today are three outstanding Needham educators, Stephanie Hamill from Broadmeadow, Steve Guerrero from Pollard, and Dan Hutter from the high school. Welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you. Dan, how long have you been at Needham High School? Uh, this is year seven. Teaching English. English, that's right, ninth, tenth, and twelfth grade right now. Great. And Stephanie, you've been in schools for? This is year 19 at the Broadmeadow School. Wow, Fifth great. grade. Steve, how about you? It's my fifth year in Needham, third year at Pollard. I was teaching third grade at Hillside before that. Great, great. Well, I appreciate you being here. I, why don't we begin? What many folks ask all the time, what is standards-based instruction? What, what, what is it? Why don't we start right there? Okay. Um, I guess it's a sort of a, a different way of setting up your classroom, both the, the teaching and learning and the assessment. Um, it sort of starts with the learning goals, what we want students to know and be able to do. And then from there, we uh, sort of design rubrics to assess those specific learning goals, and uh, then design assessments that appropriately assess um, the learning goals, the students' progress toward those goals. And then um, we, all that informs instruction. And so we sort of tailor what we do in the classroom toward meeting all those learning goals. And I think to build off of that, the learning goals um, are coming from uh, statewide frameworks or statewide standards in addition to the standards that we're developing here in Needham at all uh, levels, elementary, middle, and, and high school as well. Definitely. And it's something that um, a few teachers are piloting, but we feel that, you know, the whole district is going in that direction. So it's, it's kind of something that um, teachers, I feel, in uh, my school too, that are skeptical at first but are then sold on it as they use it. If I can just, a quick anecdote. Um, I was on a grading task force that Joe Barnes, previous principal at Pollard, started. And um, it was a two-year commitment. And we did a lot of talking about grading and about you know, what is an A, a lot of theory, a lot of articles we read. And um, you know, after a year and a half, we got a little frustrated with not having a concrete product. And the biggest turning point was Dan coming to talk to us and showing us you know, the theory of standards-based is very solid, and, you know, we buy into it, but here's how you do it in the classroom. Here's what it looks like. And that, for the students as well, is so powerful to see. You know, it's, not, it's one thing to say, you know, I have learning goals for the kids, and, and that's important, but when the kids say, this project is looking at, you know, research skills and geography skills, um, I think that's just, you know, really tying together everything that goes on in class. And, and it was really something to see that, you don't have to reinvent everything that you do. Um, teaching is not, you know, totally different from what it used to be, but things are tied and structured so much more clearly. Mm -hmm. and, and they're tied to the curriculum frameworks. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that mm -hmm. at, at every level. So mm -hmm. the, those, the, the frameworks provide a, 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 a guide for every teacher in the district. Correct, mm -hmm. right. That's right. What, if, if we drill down a little bit and think more, more specifically, um, and I'd like us to talk a little bit about what it looks like in, in your classrooms. But mm -hmm. what, what's, for, for parents and, and so that they can understand this, what's, what's different about standards-based instruction from perhaps what you had previously done? What, um, in, in some ways, isn't this what we're always, we've always been doing? Mm -hmm. no. Theoretically, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I know what, what sort of, what's different, markedly different in my classroom and how I do things is the clarity, I think picking up on, on Steve's words, the clarity with which I'm able to convey exactly what we're trying to do in every lesson and what every test is trying to assess. Um, you know, I think, you know, in the old days, you know, when I used to do it, and I think a lot of teachers still do it, and it's a, it's a system that works, um, but I was frustrated with it. You know, a test out of 100 points, let's say this question would be 20 points, and this question would be 20 points, maybe this would be 10. And then I would, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was arbitrary, you know, but I would say, oh, this is 18, and this one, this student got a 16 out of it. The problem was, I didn't really, unless I spoke to the kids or wrote some comments, but there was no inherent connection between what an 18 meant versus what a 17 meant versus what a 16 meant. Um, now, the grades directly point to exactly, I mean, pretty much exactly what 
um, skills are being developed or are, are being um, shown here and what understandings are being shown here in an assignment. You know, for example, at this moment I've got a test going on, right? And my students know that there are two areas upon which the, that they're being assessed in this test, understanding literary elements and literary analysis and interpretation skills. And they know that they could succeed in their analysis of the text that they're being assessed on, but they may not show full understanding of certain literary elements in it. And so there are going to be two different grades, and they're never merged together, right? Instead, the feedback is given precisely toward the end of, do you understand these literary elements, mm -hmm. and um, do you showing literary analysis skills? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, th I think to, to build on that and, and what that um, looks like uh, occasionally at the elementary level, um, and, and Dan, to pick up on your point, you were asking what would this look like for parents. I think the clarity piece for students is then also um, brought home for parents. So um, at the elementary level, for example, if we are giving out a project, the criteria is all outlined, the, um, the, the goals are there, the, the point system, the, the grading would be there, the rubric is attached. Um, and so all of that is up front mm -hmm. in the teaching when something is explained. So um, I always say to, to my fifth grade students, um, when I was in elementary school, middle school, and high school, I used to play the game, guess what's on the teacher's mind, uh -huh. in terms of <laughs> tests and in terms mm -hmm. of, and I said to them, you know what, you folks are so lucky, we no longer play that game. It, mm -hmm. uh, the, it clear, everything's clear, expectations are outlined. So my hope is always that they're bringing that information then mm -hmm. home to parents, and so parents will then know exactly criteria for projects and for grading as well. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping for no surprises, really. Yes. In no range, surprises, definitely. no surprises. So well, the parents know, the students know yes. what yeah. sort of what they're good at and what they're not so good at, other yeah. than I'm just not that good yeah. at tests, but I'm good at homework yeah. or whatever. And also it informs my teaching, Absolutely. right? I yeah. say, oh my goodness, a lot mm -hmm. of kids are struggling with this particular core standard mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. this, this learning goal. Mm -hmm. And so I need to, to change up my lessons mm -hmm. in the next week to focus mm -hmm. more on this Absolutely. so that as we move forward, they can improve. Definitely, and I think one of the most powerful aspects is that ability to separate skills. So in the past, if I've given you know a test on ancient Egypt and it's an open response test, you know some kids might know all the information. They know the pharaohs, what they did when they were alive, but their spelling is atrocious, and you know they use the wrong word here or there. And before they would get a grade, maybe a B. Okay, what does that B mean? It's everything mm -hmm. mashed together. Now I can say, if I'm looking for expository writing, which is one of our sixth grade social studies skills then I'm going to be looking for mechanics of writing and how you use the vocabulary words, things like that. If I'm only looking for you know, historical knowledge and context, then I'm not going to look for this assessment at the expository writing, but I'm going to look at do you know and understand the knowledge that uh, mm -hmm. we need to know about this. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's so powerful because a kid can know, uh, first of all, what to focus on. And secondly, maybe I am really strong with knowing what's going on and understanding and analyzing uh, you know, the historical aspect, but maybe my writing needs to improve. Mm -hmm. And so you know, on another assessment, I might look at you know, just the writing and see how that comes out. And so when I go on power school and enter it, it looks like two tests. It will say, you know, right. Egypt test, expository writing, and there's a grade. And then it will say Egypt test, historical knowledge, and there's a separate grade mm -hmm. that are not averaged together. And mm -hmm. I think that's great for the parents and for the kids to mm -hmm. see. What, in the classroom itself, is, 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 is your classroom set up any differently? Is there anything that you've arranged or you've posted, or is that different than perhaps what you've done before? Well, I know at the elementary level, um, many of us are posting our essential questions, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know exactly if that's yep, uh, probably absolutely. some iteration mm -hmm. of that at the middle school and high school. That. And so the essential questions, when we start a unit, say in science or social studies or um, primarily self-contained, so we would be teaching that. Um, I start my, my new unit all the time with starting exactly with the essential questions, posted, visible. Those essential questions are also printed in the packet of materials that the students will receive. So the essential questions really get at the core of my teaching over the next uh, four or five weeks, whatever the unit would, would, would run. Um, I, and I guess, I, as I explained to the students, the essential questions, if we kind of think of a bullseye, um, really kind of go right exactly to mm -hmm. the heart of what it is that we will be exploring. And also, ultimately, at the end of our time uh, studying 
whatever, weather, rocks and minerals, whatever. Here's what we should be able to know and understand as a result of our teaching. We'll go back to the essential questions, um, mm -hmm. again, to kind of inform that instruction. It's, it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the physical classroom hasn't changed a whole lot, but what I present in the beginning of the year mm -hmm. has, has changed considerably. You know, in addition to the syllabus, you know, which says, you know, we're reading Animal Farm or the Yellow Wallpaper or whatever throughout the course of the year, um, I give every student a packet of rubrics, right? And the, the rubrics are there just outlining the course expecta uh, the expectations, um, sort of what to define what it means to achieve mastery toward each learning goal, proficiency for each learning goal, needs improvement, each learning goal. It outlines that. It lays that out for them right off the bat so they get that in the first day. Of course, the their learning goals are there as well. And so, um, and I think what, how that's changed in the classroom is yeah. that um, it's, all, it's all kind of part of the, the dialogue that we have mm -hmm. in class. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, mm -hmm. again, the test going on right now, uh, you know, before I, I left to, to, to tell them, listen, remember, this is going to be assessed for this and this, mm -hmm. so remember. And then the last question also is assessed for essay writing skills, so you need to make sure you focus on that. And so, and then they ask me to clarify if I ever forget to tell them, mm -hmm. you know, so. Mm -hmm. This LAI, this literary analysis, mm -hmm. yes, it is. That's mm -hmm. right. You got to keep that in mind. And so they are consciously aware mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the skills that they're developing, um, mm -hmm. which I think is great. That's you know, exciting. it's not just Definitely. about the sort mm -hmm. of mystery. Hmm, what am I, right. what am I trying to do right now? Mm -hmm. They know exactly the skills right. and the concepts. Definitely. And for social studies, and I think science too, we've kind of teased apart the essential questions, which we look at as the curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Egypt, Greece, Rome. Um, what do we want them to know about Rome before they leave the classroom? And then. Uh, separate from that are the skill standards, which last all year. Those are research skills, expository writing, professionalism. Um, and those skills are um, animated by the essential questions. Um, and both of those are posted um, in the classroom. But I think another thing, especially about the rubrics that make, um, you know, once you have your standards set and you have your rubric levels of, you know, this is what mastery looks mm -hmm. like, this is what proficiency looks like. Uh, my kids right now are doing a project about ancient Mesopotamia. And I don't have to make up a brand new rubric all about Mesopotamia. What I do is snatch, if I want to look at the expository writing section of that project, I take the strands of that expository writing uh, rubric that I gave out at the beginning of the year, plug it into the one just for this project. And if I'm looking at you know, their research skills when we go to the media center, I'll pull out that and plug it into the rubric and tell the kids, these are the five things I'm looking for for this particular project. Talk to me a little bit about the rubric. Uh, folks hear that, and, and parents, in some ways, are familiar with the rubric when they receive MCAS information at mm -hmm. home. That's that's one place that, that, that parents see it, although there are many examples of it in life, the, the 4321, any mm -hmm. now and the MCAS. Mm -hmm. but talk a little bit about a rubric. What does it look like for you in your classroom and, 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 and for the students? Um, it's most easily done on an Excel spreadsheet, so that's how I think of it. It's just, you know, the grid of, of squares. and. You know, uh, we use levels seven, six, five, four. Um, seven is, we call it above the standard, six is at standard, five is approaching, and four is well below. And um, each of those has a descriptor. So if you are a level seven in a certain strand of expository writing, here's what it looks like. You know, you exceed the expectation of, you know, using all the mechanics properly and, and you know, using uh, voice and tone and things like that. Um, and then it describes each level going down. And that happens for every, Stand, uh, strand of standards that we have in the classroom. Um, and I think that this is a good time, uh, very similar, obviously 7654, call it mastery, proficiency, needs improvement, and not meeting the standard. Um, what, how that plays out with grades um, is something that parents need to be aware of, but mm -hmm. I think it still, it makes a lot of sense, is in the beginning of the year, um, a lot of times those grades are a little lower mm -hmm. on, on, the, on the rubric, you know, because in the beginning, you know, I first see a kid in, in September, and they assign their first essay, chances are they need improvement on their essay writing skills mm -hmm. in the beginning of the year. If they didn't, then they probably wouldn't need to take my course. So um, in the beginning of the year, there are a lot of fives, a lot of needs improvements, mm -hmm. right? And the goal is to get toward higher, higher toward, mm -hmm. toward proficiency, toward mastery, you know, mm -hmm. exceed the expectations. Um, and that happens. And I've seen that, you know, this is my sixth year doing standards-based education in my classroom. And I tell you, they always go up. Mm -hmm. They do. The mm -hmm. kids, they, they learn, they improve on their skills, and they understand the concepts better mm -hmm. as the year goes on. Um, and so by the end of the year, the grades are, are you know, in the sixes and sevens often because mm -hmm. students have met their standards. Mm -hmm. 
And at the elementary level, obviously, we are introducing this language and kind of this whole structure. And so they're um, obviously much simplified than, mm -hmm. than what you, you are using at the middle school and the high school. Um, but oftentimes, we will go through a project. Sometimes uh, uh, the criteria will be, have I put a title on mm -hmm. my poster? Okay. Is my name in the bottom right-hand corner? Uh, do I have three supporting details? And we will work through that very, very explicitly. So um, the structure is the same. It looks uh, very different because we're really introducing it at that point. Is standards-based instruction and learning so structured that there's no room for creativity mm. or spontaneity? Mm. I mean, I, sometimes I, mm. I, 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 I worry, and, and sometimes folks have said to me, well, if you're so much in a box mm -hmm. uh, and my child doesn't fit <laughs> in that box, yeah. then what? I have I, I, I actually... My next thought was that um, in doing this project, uh, we were in the media center today, most of the kids are choosing to do PowerPoints as their final product. And um, you know, some kids were asking me to look at their project, whether it was done, I was looking at it. And they said, what do you think, Mr. Gray, what do you think? And they you know, tried to read my face. Yeah, it looks like a six, I think it's a six, which is <laughs> at the stand. And then a kid says, you know, we have a little extra time. What if we made up a rap about the Phoenicians? What if we brought in a, a, you know, a rap song and sang it? Would that be a level seven? I said, absolutely, that would be, mm -hmm. because, you know, that level seven, that, that above the standard, is so open, and it's something that, you know, in the old days, you might have a kid that has, you know, B minus or something, they come to you, can I have extra credit? Mm -hmm. I said, well, if I assign it to you, it's not really extra credit. Um, but now you have that leeway where mm -hmm. kids can just take things and run with it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had kids who, uh, for example, on the very first homework of, of the year, they had to uh, look on a map and locate some places. And one, it was kind of an old map I was using, it was a hand-me-down, and had uh, Ceylon off the coast of India. And so some of the kids left it blank. I said, okay, that's level six. I didn't expect you to know it. They've changed their name. But I had another kid who came in and he said, well, I found out that they changed their name to Sri Lanka, and here's some information about why they did mm. that. That's a level seven. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask him to do that. He didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. That's that going above the standard. Mm -hmm. now, I would argue that um, this <coughs> system, standards-based education, allows for arguably more mm -hmm. um, more sort of creativity because, mm -hmm. you know, going back to that test when I was just 20 points on this question, you know, I, I might have had in my head back in the day, well, if they get this piece of information, that's mm -hmm. five points, and this piece of information, that's five points. Instead, I don't, I'm not allowed that crutch. Mm -hmm. Instead, I have to look at the skills and say, you know what, this question demonstrates mastery of or proficiency in uh, literary analysis and interpretation skills or essay writing skills. And so I then, um, I, and, and it's sort of regardless in that in that way of sort of the, the content that's in there. Of course, there's content pieces that need to be assessed as well, and so there, um, there is that. But um, there are a lot of ways to achieve uh, mas mastery or proficiency towards certain skills, mm -hmm. and they don't have to be confined to really any particular mm -hmm. um, boxes, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things, you know, Steve, you spoke in the very beginning about how some teachers have shown some resistance to this. And I think a lot of that comes from they like how they've done things. They don't want to lose that creativity, mm -hmm. their ability to do things their own mm -hmm. way in their own classrooms. Mm -hmm. And this has not been that case at, at all. I mean, people no. are allowed yeah. to still mm -hmm. have their own personalities in mm -hmm. the classrooms. They do exactly, even the assignments mm -hmm. are often different from, t I mean, between my class and another class. Mm -hmm. um, however, the sort of, the what's standardized, if you will, are their learning goals. Mm -hmm. We still have the same learning goals. Um, we still are looking for the same overall things on these rubrics, um, but the way students show the opportunities to, uh, to, to the show their teaching, their, their learning mm -hmm. toward these goals are varied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think another exciting piece of it that um, has happened at many of the elementary schools at the upper grade levels, uh, student-led portfolio conferences, oh, cool. so that um, the projects, the rubrics, the criteria are now in um, the students' portfolios. And so we, when we sit with parents, um, the kids can absolutely positively go through and explain to their teachers, to their parents, exactly what it was that they did well, mm -hmm. what, um, assess what, what their assessment looked like. And there's an accountability piece there. So you're, you're and so at, at the elementary level, that what it, one thing that's very different from what you're suggesting is that 
instead of the typical or what we may think of as the parent-teacher conference where the parent mm -hmm. comes home and sits down with the child and says, this is what you're doing wrong or this is what I heard, the mm -hmm. child is now leading the conversation with the parent and the teacher and going through a portfolio. I would say that many teachers at the elementary level are yeah. starting to yep. move in this yep. direction at, at, um, at many of the schools. This is, this is the new direction. Um, I think particularly as a fifth grade teacher, um, those, those students are ready to do that. Mm -hmm. They're starting to really have those self-reflection skills, that awareness, and we are promoting, I think, all of this through our use of um, criteria, rubric, standards-based learning. And it's exciting because it's not uh, the teachers just explaining to parents, it's the child right. actually communicating, but the evidence is in the data right. of their portfolio. And that's what to me is so incredibly exciting. It is not at all subjective, it's objective assessment because the grading, uh, the proof is right there in their portfolio. And I think also, um, whereas the kids who have something already graded can look at it and see where did I mm -hmm. you know, do a good job, where do I need to improve? But even uh, beyond that, you know, I mean, we all have that file cabinet drawer full of old projects and old, you know, <laughs> papers that w before I even assign a project, I can pull up some from last year and mm -hmm. the kids can look at it and look at the rubric and say, that project looks like a four. Mm -hmm. You know, it's missing a bunch of stuff. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. This one looks like a five because it's okay, but not great. You know, and you can show those examples even before they begin, so they have an idea where they're going, and it's not that hazy mystery of, you know, will before I start anything, will you know I score high as I want to, and, and so that I think is really powerful too. Absolutely. And to piggyback off of that, Steve, um, so we call those exemplars. Mm -hmm. So it's a model of showing what the end result would look like, a poster or a PowerPoint presentation, mm -hmm. whatever the final endpoint. And I have found in my experience that each year, even my exemplars improve as a result of the fact that the students are looking at it and they're thinking, hmm, what is it that we could even go above and beyond? Absolutely. And thus, as the exemplars improve each year, I think think, hmm, that piece of it could be added. It was a terrific piece. But it's this, it's this wonderful uh, way to kind of e even increase that level of um, that final product. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, it, it, take, it takes the mystery out exactly. of, of, right. the, of, a, of a child or a right. parent coming in saying, now I wonder what this teacher is looking exactly. for. Exactly. Right. Uh, which is certainly what, what I know I was subjected to yes. in, in, yeah. in school. You weren't <laughs> exactly <laughs> sure. Uh, and, and some of this, uh, frankly, uh, relates to the idea that, that I hope we can get away from in schools and standards-based instruction mm -hmm. leads us in that direction. What I refer to as the educational lottery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Depending on what school you're in or what teacher you have uh, or, in, or in high school, what, what, what course it, it, or what level, you, you will get a different experience. Mm -hmm. You may not get the same thing. And uh, standards-based instruction uh, points us toward learning goals mm -hmm. and, and to a specific standard while allowing for that creativity yes. and the personality of the teacher. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the other part of it. We, we, the, the personality of the teacher and the teacher's passion needs to come out and needs to be part of this. Um, I imagine that is the case in your classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. I mean, it really grounds everything that you do. I mean, we have things that are fun mm -hmm. in sixth grade social studies. You know, we made clay cuneiform tablets and we made wax uh, cylinder seals. Uh, and even though that's a fun thing that has been going on for a while, even before I got there, I can now say the reason we're doing that mm -hmm. is to show the way the Mesopotamians wrote, you know, and I can point to historical knowledge and context, that standard. I can point to an essential question of, you know, what are some important developments of Mesopotamia. And so really, um, the activities that go on in the classroom are really grounded in, in, in what I want to teach. I know where I'm going with it. and and. You know, I don't feel locked into mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. I just feel more like what I'm doing, it makes sense. It's a good investment mm -hmm, of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, there's a sort of the famous sophomore oral project in the high school, in the English department. Every 10th uh, grade English student has this sort of sophomore project, which is sort of famous and involves research and involves uh, making a large scale presentation. But now that sort of our department has honed down sort of skills, right, sort of its presentation skills, it's working, you know, creating a, you know, a PowerPoint or some sort of media, and then also research, and then also uh, it, it tests um, the archetypes, which is a major component of the content for 10th grade. Um, I've actually had the freedom, and a couple other teachers have done this as well, of designing alternative sophomore oral projects rather than this one traditional project, which was always the old um, requirement. Now it's just the requirement is to meet these skills and to show your, you know, that you're going to achieve these learning goals. I have sort of 
three mini sophomore orals, but they still achieve the same goal. And so it's actually been an opportunity for um, for us to do some different things mm -hmm. in the classroom. I, on, on that note, the, the assessment, the other end of this, mm -hmm. uh, or related to it all the way along, is mm -hmm. the assessment. And you had mentioned, Steve, and Dan, you're talking about it now, that different opportunities uh, for students to be creative, but mm -hmm. different opportunities for assessment, because it's not just paper and pencil mm -hmm. assessment. Right. Uh, what are some of the opportunities mm -hmm. for different kinds of assessment with standards-based instruction? Just even a simple thing, like I don't use the word test anymore. I try not mm -hmm. to use the word mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. So, you know, used to using it, but I like to use the word assessment, and I'll write that on the you know, an assessment coming mm -hmm. up. Um, and it can be anything. When you look at the descriptor on the rubric, if you're looking for, if I'm looking for, you know, uh, uh, historical knowledge and context, do you understand, you know, the way a certain society is set up? That could be a model, it could be a poster, it could mm -hmm. be a PowerPoint, it could be a written essay. And so I think as long as the product shows me that the, you know, child has reached that standard level that I'm looking for, the actual physical product isn't as important as it used to be. Well, and, and then, you know, just what, an example of one of the sophomore or product that I was talking about that I do in my classroom, um, doing right now with my 10th graders, is the Marketing the Ideal Project, is what it's called. And so, it, apart from, you know, it's different from the traditional sophomore oral, when they just do research on an archetype and teach the class about it, um, like my students are in groups and they've been assigned a product that uh, they have, to, like a real life product, like one group is doing Crocs, you know, another group is doing... Um, uh, Oakley sunglasses. Anyway, they have to design um, a communications plan, which is essentially, a, you know, an advertising campaign. So they're doing research, so that's a research skills um, learning goal. Mm -hmm. They will um, design this this whole presentation in an organized fashion, which is getting across their their goal, which is essentially that this is the best plan to sell this product, which is essay writing skills. Essentially, mm -hmm. they're not writing, but it's still mm -hmm. organizing an essay. Then there's um, the actual presentation itself. Right, which is, again, presentation skills, and they're developing a, a PowerPoint for it. And it's called the Marketing the Ideal Project. The way to, to uh, sell the product is to appeal to the, the, the audience's sense of the ideal, the romantic ideals of the ideal place, or the, of, you know, the ideal hero, mm -hmm. which is the content piece, the archetypes mm -hmm. for 10th grade. So that's four different course standards, mm -hmm. four different course mm -hmm. learning goals that are being assessed in a project mm -hmm. that is completely outside of the box, which right. I'm thrilled about. That's mm -hmm. exciting. And I think at the elementary level, this is so exciting because many of the things that you're sharing, we're starting to introduce. So um, we are also, many of us, trying to move away from using that word test mm -hmm. and really consciously using the word assessment, um, if that will be the end result. But also introducing um, posters, trifold brochures. It may be, uh, we're learning PowerPoint right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be a, a PowerPoint slide presentation. Uh, right now, the students uh, in my classroom are working on bio poems to okay. uh, introduce their peacemakers. And then they'll be writing uh, a speech in first person. Uh, yeah, and they'll be presenting that. So, so very different forms. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, 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 standards-based learning, as I'm understanding, as I'm coming to understand it in the new schools, and as it evolves, and it's going to take time, it's mm -hmm. in, in happening in, in, in different places in different ways. Uh, is, is actually challenging students at a higher level, but also allowing them to express their creativity uh, and their learning in different ways. So it's providing a, a structure for that. I, I'm, I'm hearing that, that we're, we're really talking about a, a specific and a, and a guaranteed uh, curriculum for, for all of our children at every level in, in every school. We're, we're talking about very clear expectations for what students should know and be able to do. And we're also talking about uh, students having multiple ways to demonstrate their learning, all of which are a part of standards-based learning in, in the Needham Public Schools. I think that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.